The gate is the open. Gate is open. They're, they're riding, they're riding, riding, riding. Oh, God. oh God, it's so oh God. beautiful. So beautiful. So the Lord reigneth. The Lord has reigned. The Lord shall reign forever. The Lord reigneth. The Lord has reigned. The Lord shall reign forever. The Lord reigneth. The Lord has reigned. The Lord shall reign forever. The Lord is God. 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 Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. Hey, welcome to my frequency. I felt compelled to say something that's been bothering me for some time. Most people are of the opinion that this fake Jesus deal will come down from heaven and smite the devil and his angels, and that there's going to be this final fucking war for peace and Armageddon, Ragnarok, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Like this wacky story of the revelation, fire and brimstone and eternal damnation. The ultimate judge, the one to fucking come down and judge everyone. However, I'm here to tell you that that's not the case. The only person to judge is the self. Heaven is not a place of exclusion because of some God. The only person that keeps us from heaven is the self, or the illusion of the self. But the self remains the judge, and the true self is the consciousness of the Christ. And here I have to make a distinction between the fake Jesus character and the mythical Yeshua of Gnosticism. Yeshua the magician, Yeshua the healer. Jesus is this fake man-made figure that died for our sins and therefore gives people the right to rape and murder in his name. Yeshua, the mythical magician, healer, mystic, the Gnostic Christ, this guy knows that we are all one. Like I've been trying to show you in my fucking videos. Firstly, let's talk hypothetically what would happen if Satan decides to repent and wants heaven on earth. Would the Son of God condemn him to eternal damnation? I don't think so. Yes, you'd say to me, but... What about Judgment Day? I say, this is Judgment Day. But not Judgment Day by some God. No. Judgment Day will be judged by the self. You will be your own judge. And here is the cool part. The Christ Consciousness will be the judge. Even Satan himself has been affected by this. Now here are some clues. If this Jesus guy never existed, and by the way, there are some historical writings of a Yeshua, the magician, the healer, but no evidence of crucifixion or resurrection. None. And those two clever Roman guys that sat down and invented this Jesus dude from Gnostic writings knew that if someone else died for your sins, it would utterly pacify the people. The truth is that you yourself have to become the Christ. And make atonement for your own sins by spilling a little bit of blood. Of your own blood, obviously. And proving that you have the Christ consciousness in you, and that you are making an atonement for your sins. You are the mythical Christ. Not some fake arsehole that's come to judge everybody. But someone that's here to make you see that the self is the judge, and that the self is the Christ. If any of you among you then stand up and claim to be the Christ and judges and divides, know that that person is false. Here to sow more war, rape and fucking murder. I want to ask you this question. How would you create the new heaven and the new earth if you don't have any boundaries? This whole exercise was to learn the knowledge of good and evil. And now you want to get rid of the best teacher of knowledge evil. We've all been everything. You've been the reptilian fucking doing all sorts of weird shit. You've been the murderer of the beloved wife. The sooner you realize that we are all one and that the person across from you is actually you, the quicker we'll have the new heaven and the new earth. Know thyself has bigger meaning than just knowing yourself. It means knowing what yourself is. If you steal from someone, you steal from yourself. If you murder someone, you murder yourself. 
Everything we do to others, we are doing to ourselves. The way to healing is seeing yourself in others, and then it's a simple case of self-forgiveness. This is the Christ consciousness. You ask, how can there be creation without duality? Well, it's quite simple, actually. We've learned the boundaries through math and division. Now we can create with pure imagination. You are an image jinn, hence the word imagine. We are magical beings, and if our imaginations are pure, we shall create the new heaven and the new earth. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because all the imaginations of man was evil. We now have the opportunity to create our magical world. You, however, have been programmed to think in this way of conflict. Every book you've read, every TV program you've seen, every film has a good guy and a crook. And good fights evil, always conflict. You love it, feed off it. And it keeps you from the truth. And the truth is that we are all one. I come from the roof and I'll be your able navigator. John said, we never heard anything about this teaching of crucifixion. We never heard anything about this teaching of resurrection. And the brother didn't come a baby in Bethlehem. He came a full grown man. Now here's the problem. I would love to believe that the Christ walked on planet earth. And I still do. I still do believe that the Christ walked on planet earth. I still do believe in answer to this question that there was a man that walked on the earth that was known as the master. I believe it solely by faith, solely by inspiration, solely by download, if you will. I believe it only because, to be frank with you, I want to believe it. Because there is not one shred of empirical objective proof that the man, Jesus, the Christ, the Lord, Yeshua, Messiah, whatever you call him, there's no proof that he walked on planet Earth ever. Zero proof, ladies and gentlemen, zero. And this is coming from a person that wants to believe it. I spent 20 years as a Protestant minister. I have a Bible college degree. I spent over 100,000 hours studying the Christian scriptures. And I'm telling you, it's not there. But the Bible says, Mother Goose says that Jack and Jill went up a hill to fetch a pail of water too. Is that true? To say that the Bible's true because the Bible says it's true is the worst of circular reasoning. To say the Bible's true because the Bible says it's true makes you look, I know people don't like this word, but it makes you look stupid because it is stupid. The Jews during the time of Jesus, the people that lived in Jerusalem during the purported time of Jesus, the first hundred years of this current, you know, a hundred from zero to 100 AD, they were the most highly literate people on the planet. And you're telling me that this dude walked around for 32 years creating all this havoc, miraculous birth, spectacular show trial, crucified, buried, resurrected, wrecked, and nobody wrote it down? Nobody wrote it down? Dudes, dudettes. None of this was written down for over 100, close to 200 years after he was supposedly here. None of it. None of it. And what about a great historian who wrote a thing called the history of the Jews in the first century, and he didn't mention it? Not one writer within 200 years of the time that Jesus supposedly walked on planet Earth ever mentioned one word about him being here. And even those that did in the Bible said, oh, by the way, he wasn't born in Bethlehem. He became a full-grown man. 
And if you don't believe that, you're supporting the Antichrist spirit. Every day 